Hi, I'm James the Light Guy, and today we're going back in time to 2014. This is a fanless LED headlight bulb marketed in 2014 as an R1 model H7. This particular bulb series had a number of innovative features and a few design quirks that eliminated it from the current marketplace. Let's get into it. The biggest feature that these bulbs had is that all of the bases were identical. The only difference were differences, excuse me, were the adapter base plate, the distance on this central shaft where the LED was placed, and what electrical connection it needed for the vehicle. Starting at the vehicle end of this assembly, we start with our positive and negative wires. We have simple blade connectors, since this is an H7, and they are just crimped onto the wire. The thin wires here are plenty thick for the amount of current that these draw. These are actually only about a 10 watt LED, which is surprising. The wires go into this thicker rubber sheath, which comes down to this connector. It has strain relief, and even after six years of being in storage, the strain relief is still functional and pretty soft. Now, the positive and negative wires are not annotated on this connector, but thanks to this triangular retaining clip, it can only go into the assembly in one direction. But there lies the first quirk. The pins in here are just straight cylindrical. There's no chamfer or bevel on the top of those pins, and they are almost identical in size to those holes. It is a very tight tolerance. Getting it to line up without bending those pins is rather difficult. And if you do manage to get them in, that triangle retainer does not perfectly match the clip. As you can see, we are pressed in as tightly as possible, but we can't get that to seat. Let's pull that back out. There we go. We then have a small amount of heat sinks or heat sinking fins, creating a decent amount of surface area in there. But there is a large thermal mass. So knowing that these are actually a 10 watt bulb or two 5 watt chips, uh, it would take a very long time for this to overheat. The next quirk moving up is the base plate adapter. This adapter was put on before the LEDs were soldered in place. There is no way to remove it from the assembly, which does make, in this case, as an H7, getting the retaining clip to pass the heat sink and catch on this lip very difficult. We have two embedded traces and the chip on the thick aluminum core. Now I'm not going to use the adapter, we're just going to attach our wires directly to the contacts inside and turn it on. Here you can see at 14.4 volts, let's bring that down just a touch, we are drawing about 0.75 amps and you can see this dark spot here. However, we can see the light from each side of 
the chip thanks to the large domes on those 5 uh, five watt Cree chips. This does significantly reduce this shadow area at a distance, but the overall brightness being only 10 watts is pretty low. Let's grab our light measuring box and take a look. We have our meter set to times 10. We are going to start by putting the bulb in with the dark spot facing the sensor and then rotate 90 degrees to get the full brightness. So from zero, we go up to about 155 and we'll rotate 90 degrees for a peak brightness of 500 lux. That's not too bad. Uh, if you average that, it is ever so slightly brighter than a halogen bulb that we checked in a previous video. I will link that down below. And let's put it in a headlight assembly to see what it looks like beam pattern wise. Here we are in our basement wall test. We can see that we are lined up with that column, putting us about four meters away from the wall and still drawing about seven and a or 0 0.725 amps presently. So as I was saying before with that non-detachable base type, I had to struggle with this for about 10 minutes to get it in this assembly and this assembly isn't in a car. I had all the space to work with. That is the biggest flaw so far, is trying to get it into an assembly. That, and not sure how well you can see, but this is the back of the assembly where the dust cap would be. And we have another about inch and a half of heat sink sticking off the back. If you have a tight engine bay, this bulb would not have worked for you. As we can see, it does appear to be very bright. This is a projector housing from a 2008 Subaru Legacy. However, the beam pattern is a little wonky. As you can see, we have a significant dark spot here and some stray light cast up across the top. So, starting at this point, using our times 10 function on our light meter, this measured 2 lux, 27 lux in the center here, and 6 lux over here on the passenger side off into the woods or off the side of the road. Actually, the light variance is almost a perfect V in this, where everything within this V I'm drawing was about 27 lux, which was really surprising. It did a very good job illuminating this section of light, but everything past the yellow line onto oncoming traffic became significantly dark, and it actually cast too much light off into the shadows over here. Now, ideally, that could be adjusted uh, within the housing to move this center point a little closer to the driver's side, but this is per, you know, normal settings, the center of that light beam. There is a slight notch up for aiming headlights. So properly aimed, you would be casting a lot more light forward and to the right. Let's go back to the studio for the conclusion. Back in the studio, I forgot one major flaw is if we turn on our power supply, whoops, there we go. We are all hooked up, but we have no light. This connection is prone to corrosion and being loose, increasing resistance and burning out the bulb. This is an awful bulb. If you enjoyed this video, 
like and subscribe and share with your friends. I'm James the Light Guy.